Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Jay. In this episode, we're gonna look at different ways to optimize S3 performance. In July 2018, AWS announced S3 increased request rate performance for no additional charge. S3 supports parallel requests and automatically scales to support high request rates. The increased performance can achieve at least 3,500 write requests per second per prefix, for put, post, copy and delete requests, and at least 5,500 read requests per second per prefix, for get and head requests. S3 performance scales per object prefix. There are no limits to the number of prefixes. You can increase your read or write performance by parallelizing reads. For instance, if you create 10 prefixes in an S3 bucket to parallelize reads, you could scale your read performance to 55,000 read requests per second. S3 object prefix is like a path name before the object name. A prefix may look like a subfolder inside a bucket from AWS console. However, it's part of an object key. S3 increased request rate removes the need to randomize the prefix. You no longer need to randomize prefixes to achieve the high performance. You can now use logical or sequential naming patterns based on your application requirement without any performance impact. With S3 increase request rate, we can let S3 scale horizontally by adding prefixes to objects. Here is an example of S3 prefix. You have an S3 object called cat.gif stored in a bucket called mybucket. Path slash subpath slash is the prefix of the object. You are using slash as the delimiter. The object key is composed of the prefix and object name, which is path slash subpath slash cat.gif. Object keys are partitioned by prefixes. In the example, we have 2020 slash 7 slash cat.gif and 2020 slash 8 slash dog.gif objects in the same bucket. Because their prefixes begin with 2020, these objects are likely partitioned together. Previously, this can result in significant performance impact. Because read and write requests of these objects can go to the same partition. Before July 2018, you need to randomize prefixes to increase S3 performance. The common approach is adding a random string or a short hash before the prefix. This can increase the complexity of your application logic. After AWS introduced S3 increased request rate, you no longer need to randomize prefixes. You can use logical or sequential prefixes for object naming without performance impact. You should consider caching for frequently accessed S3 objects. Especially if your application is read-heavy, and sending repeated GET requests for a common set of objects. Successful caching can result in low latency and high data transfer rates. Applications that use caching send fewer requests to S3 directly, which can help reduce request costs. Amazon CloudFront is a fast CDN that transparently caches data from S3 in geographically distributed edge locations. When objects are accessed from multiple regions, or over the internet, CloudFront allows data to be cached close to the users that are accessing the objects. This can result in high-performance delivery of popular S3 content. CloudFront is recommended for distributing static or dynamic content globally. Amazon Elastic Cache for Redis is a managed in-memory cache for structured data. It provides a high-performance scalable and cost-effective caching solution. Elastic Cache is a recommended caching layer for structured data. For instance, you can cache metadata of popular S3 objects in Elastic Cache. Both CloudFront and Elastic Cache can provide caching for read-heavy workloads. The difference is that CloudFront can almost cache any types of content globally and leverage global edge locations. Elastic Cache is recommended to store structured data in memory, however, it doesn't leverage global edge locations. S3 Transfer Acceleration uses the globally distributed CloudFront Edge network. It speeds up transfer by routing uploads and downloads over the global edge network. Transfer acceleration is effective at minimizing or eliminating the latency, caused by the geographic distance between globally dispersed clients and a regional application using S3. You can enable transfer acceleration on a bucket. For the transfer acceleration to work, the bucket name must conform to the DNS naming requirements, and must not contain any dots. For instance, if a bucket is named mybucket.com, transfer acceleration won't work. If you want to use transfer acceleration to transfer data to and from the acceleration-enabled bucket, you need to use S3 Accelerate Endpoints. Transfer Acceleration supports two types of S3 Accelerate Endpoint styles. You can use the normal endpoint style, or the dual stack endpoint if your application needs to requests over both IPv4 and IPv6. 
you can use the S3 Transfer Acceleration Speed Comparison Tool to compare accelerated upload speeds with normal speeds across AWS regions. Just Google S3 Speed Comparison Tool and you can find it. Both S3 Transfer Acceleration and Amazon CloudFront use similar concepts to speed up the data transfer. They both leverage AWS Global Edge Network to transfer data. However, there are some differences. S3 Transfer Acceleration is a feature of S3 service. Amazon CloudFront is a separate AWS service. CloudFront not only can accelerate content delivery using the Global Edge Network, but also can cache content in edge location and minimize the delivery of the same content over the long distance. CloudFront can provide caching and content delivery for S3, EC2, API Gateway and other AWS services. S3 Transfer Acceleration helps speed up the data transfer over the long distance, however, it doesn't have the caching capability. 5 GB is the maximum S3 object size allowed to be uploaded in a single operation. You must use multi-part upload when your objects are over 5 GB. If you upload an object that is over 100 MB, it's recommended using multi-part uploads instead of uploading the object in a single operation. Multi-part uploads can help optimize the performance for uploading large objects. It allows you to upload a single object as a set of parts in parallel, to increase the aggregate throughput. Each part is a contiguous portion of the object's data. You can upload these object parts independently and in any order. If transmission of any part fails, you can retransmit that part without affecting other parts. After all parts of your object are uploaded, S3 assembles these parts and creates the object. Smaller part size minimizes the impact of restarting a failed upload, due to a network error, which helps you quickly recover from any network interruption. You can pause and resume object uploads, if you need to upload object parts over time. Once you initiate multi-part uploads, there is no expiry. You must explicitly complete or abort the multi-part uploads. You can begin multi-part uploads, before you know the final object size. For instance, when you're creating a large file, you can start uploading it with multi-part uploads as you are creating it. Byte range fetches allows concurrent connections to S3, to fetch different byte ranges from within the same object. This helps you achieve higher aggregate throughput than a single whole object request. Fetching smaller ranges of a large object also allows your application to improve retry times, when requests are interrupted. Using the range HTTP header in a get object request, you can fetch a byte range from an object, transferring only the specified portion. Typical sizes for byte range requests are 8 megabytes or 16 megabytes. If an object was uploaded using multi-part uploads, it's a good practice to fetch it in the same part sizes, or at least align to part boundaries for the best performance. Get requests can directly address individual parts, you can recover a failure in the download for a specific byte range. You can use S3 byte range fetches if you want to speed up the downloads, or just download partial amounts of the file. Common use cases are using byte range fetches to download certain parts of data as a preview. For instance, you only need to download header information, before downloading the whole file. Many video streaming websites use the concept of byte range fetches to provide partial video preview. When you encrypt objects with SSE KMS, the performance is bound by the KMS limits. When you upload an object using SSE KMS, it makes a generate data key KMS API request. When you download an object encrypted by SSE KMS, it makes a decrypt KMS API request. S3 makes these KMS API requests on your behalf. These requests count towards your regional KMS request quotas. At the moment, you can have 5,500, 10,000, or 30,000 requests per second, depending on the AWS region. KMS throttles the requests if you exceed a combined total of maximum uploads or downloads per second. When you work with S3 and EC2, it's recommended having S3 buckets and EC2 instances in the same AWS region. This helps reduce network latency and data transfer costs. For latency-sensitive applications, you should time out and retry with exponential backoff for slower operations. When you retry a request, AWS recommends using a new connection to S3 and performing a fresh DNS lookup. S3 automatically scales in response to sustained new request rates and dynamically optimizes the performance. AWS SDKs provide built-in support for S3 performance optimization such as automatic retries on HTTP 503 errors, and Transfer Manager horizontal scales using byte range requests. 
It's important to use the latest version of AWS SDKs to obtain the latest performance optimization features. In this episode, we've learned different ways to optimize S3 performance. You can achieve high throughput with horizontal scaling and parallel processes. For instance, you can create multiple S3 prefixes and leverage S3 increased request rates for high performance. You can also launch multiple concurrent connections to upload or download data in parallel. You should consider caching for frequently accessed objects if you have read-heavy workloads. You can use CloudFront to leverage global edge locations and cache S3 content and distribute them globally. You can use ElastiCache as an in-memory caching layer for S3 object metadata of hot objects. You can speed up data transfer over a long distance using S3 transfer acceleration. When you upload large objects, use multi-part uploads to optimize performance instead of a single operation. When you download large objects, use byte range fetches to split objects and optimize the performance. You should also account for KMS limits when you encrypt objects using SSE KMS. Encryptions and decryptions using SSE KMS are limited by the KMS request quotas. You should use S3 and EC2 in the same AWS region if you need to access the S3 bucket from an EC2 instance. Use timeouts and retries for latency sensitive applications. S3 automatically scales in response to sustained new request rates and dynamically optimizes the performance. As a best practice, you should always use the latest AWS SDKs when possible to obtain the latest performance optimization features. Okay, that's all for S3 performance optimization. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you like the video, please help us and hit the like button. If you want to watch more tutorials, please subscribe to the Cloudomy TV channel. Make sure to turn on the notification and stay tuned. At Cloudomy, we're passionate about cloud and AI technology. Please share your feedback and thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to watch. Happy watching and happy learning.